Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for wanting to be with us. We ask that you would help us to know without a doubt that our faith begins and is made perfect in your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Uh, our text for today is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, uh, 2, verse 1 and 2. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set that seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That's our uh, text for today. Uh, now, in the past three or four weeks or so, uh, we've talked about uh, Abel's faith worship based upon uh, the gift that he offered to God uh, by faith, made him a faith worshiper. And we re must remember that we also worship God in our giving. And you can't detach our gift from ourselves. And then we talked about Enoch and his faith walk. He walked with God while he was here on earth. And God translated, God took him across the remaining troubles that he had in this life and took him to be with him. Uh, only two people have uh, basically... Uh, went to be with God without ever dying, and that was Elijah and Enoch. And then from Enoch, we went to Noah and faith working. He built the ark of, uh, to save his family from the great flood and uh, animals to replenish the livestock and whatever uh, uh, in the life after the flood. So Noah and his faith working. And then we went to Moses and faith warring. We are in a constant day-to-day -day war for our lives. We are, we are in a war against our faith, our beliefs. And it's important that uh, we... Uh, put our faith into action to maintain that faith in Jesus Christ, in the salvific work of Jesus Christ. Now, our uh, subject for today is our faith begins and is made perfect in Jesus Christ. I know that's kind of a long subject. Our faith begins and is made perfect in Jesus Christ. Now look at Jesus Christ. He's the author, the originator, and the finisher of our faith. It was in looking at, uh, looking to him that we were saved for, uh, to look means to trust. To look, we were looking to Jesus to save us, and he did. And to look means to trust him. When the dying Jews looked to the uplifted serpent on the pole in Moses' day, they were healed. And this is an illustration of our salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. 
John chapter four, verse, uh, John chapter three, rather, verse 14 says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. And verse 15 says that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. And then John chapter 12, verse 32 says, this is Jesus uh, speaking, says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now, looking unto Jesus or trusting in Jesus describes an attitude of faith and not just a single act, but it's an attitude, a lifestyle. When our Lord was here on earth, he lived by faith. The mystery of his uh, divine and human nature is too profound for us to really understand fully. But we do know that he had to trust his father in heaven as he lived here day by day. The writer of Hebrews quotes our Lord saying, I will put my trust in him, Hebrews 2 and 13. That quotation is from Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 17. And that's, that says, being paraphrased, uh, I will trust. The fact that Jesus prayed is another evidence that he lived by faith. Jesus endured far more than any of the heroes, heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 and those that we have uh, been studying about recently. And therefore, he is a perfect example for us to follow. He endured the cross. On the cross, he suffered for all of our sins for all of the sins of the whole world. And this involved shame, suffering, the contradiction or opposition of sinners, and even temporary rejection by his father. Yet he endured and finished the work that his heavenly father gave him to do. John, 4, John 17 and 4 says, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. Now, though the readers of Hebrews had suffered persecution, they had not yet resisted unto blood, shedding their blood. And that Hebrews uh, 12 and 4 says, in your struggles against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. None of them was yet a martyr. A martyr is those who died because of their faith. But Jesus battled against sin and he shed his own blood. It was his blood and only his blood that could and did wash all of our sins away. What is it that enabled Jesus to endure the cross? Please keep in mind that during his ministry on earth, Jesus did not use his divine power for his own personal needs. Satan even tempted him to do this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. But Jesus refused. And it was our Lord's faith that enabled him to endure. And that same faith will enable us to endure. Jesus kept the eye of his faith on the joy that was set before him. From Psalms chapter 16, verse 8 through 10, and he knew that he would come out of that tomb alive. Now, Peter also quoted uh, 
the Psalms in Acts chapter 2, verse 34 through 36. And there are other verses that he uh, that uh, deals with this, uh, like Acts, I mean, Psalms uh, chapter, Psalm 16, verse 11, and Psalms 110, verse 1 and verse 4. So the joy that was set before him would include Jesus completing the Father's will, his resurrection and exaltation, and his joy in presenting believers to the Father in glory. Find more about that in Jude verse 24. Throughout this epistle, the writer emphasizes the importance of the future hope. His readers were prone to look back and wanted some time to go back. But he encouraged them to follow Christ's example and look ahead by faith. Mankind has a historical desire to look back and even go back from time to time. Even most of Jesus' disciples made the decision to return to their fishing boats or their tax booth, their tax collecting booths. The heroes of faith named in, the, in chapter 11 lived for the future, and this enabled them to endure. You can read more about that in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10, verse 14 through 16 and verse 24 through 27. Now it's imperative that we live for the future and not the present. If we intend to endure our present temptations, we must look to the future. Like Peter, when we get our eye of faith off of the Savior, we start to sink as Peter did in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 and, uh, through 33. The trouble in this world starts to pull us down. But if we would only cry out, Lord, save me, Jesus will reach down and save us. Since Christ is the author and finisher of our faith, trusting him releases his power in our lives. I, I could try to follow the example of some of my uh, high school, uh, the, the great athletes during that time, like Willie Mays or, or uh, Smoking Joe Frazier or, or uh, Roger Maris or and, and, and football players like uh, uh, Ed Tutal Jones. Well, I was another duck when he came along. Uh, but there were many uh, great athletes that for years, uh, if I was able to follow them and their examples, I'd still be a failure. But if any of my, in my younger days, that athlete, could have entered into my life and shared what they knew and how about the know-how and the ability with me. That would have made me a winner, perhaps. And Christ is both the exemplar and the enabler. That's where I was going with the athlete idea. That Christ is the one that enables us to endure. He's our example, the one that we follow, his example, to endure. And as we see him in the word and yield to his spirit, he increases our faith and enables us to run the race all the way to the finish line. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39, the English Standard Version says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tri tri tribulations or distress or persecution or famines or as it is written, 
For your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present or things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I want to just as Paul did, be able to say, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I've kept the faith. And then I'm sure that I will hear my master say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. What do I keep my eyes on that will help me to endure? We must keep our eyes on Calvary, where Jesus hung, bled, and died in our place. We must keep our eyes on Calvary because Jesus said, from now until I return, remember me. Remember what I did for you on Calvary. Remember that I gave my life so that you could have life and have it more abundantly. Remember Calvary, which is where I became what you were so that you could become what I was. I became sin for you in your place so that you could become the righteousness of God. After they crucified him on Calvary, on the cross, then they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands. So I want to encourage us today, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Keep the faith, endure hardship, stay safe in this pandemic and receive your crown one day. That's all I've got for today. So let's pray and uh, we'll see you the next time. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the manifold blessings that you continually uh, shower on us. Thank you providing, for providing your son to be the beginning and completion of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep the faith, brothers and sisters, and Hang on in there. Until next time, take care.